Hello, everyone, on this very rainy, very stormy Monday afternoon. That's when I am filming or taping these recordings. I'm going to spend this rainy afternoon inside, so I'm going to use this time to answer a few questions that have come through, and I'm just going to do it with podcast. Um, it's easier for me, and I'm lazy today. So the, the first question is from Julie. And she says, I do have a question. I haven't practiced in about three years, and I still have herbs that I didn't use back then. Do I have to get new herbs, or can I use the ones I have till they are gone? Thank you in advance. Well, there's a couple different um, stances on this. I know there are some people who believe that they have to, um, maybe once a year, they will like clean out and recycle and to get all new herbs. Um, but I'm not one of those people. I have to um, pinch pennies, and um, I view the magic in the herbs maybe differently from the people who feel that they have to be fresh or they have to be renewed or changed. Um, I believe the magic is in the atoms and the molecules. And your herb is going to be at your herb, the same substance, no matter how old it is. And uh, along with that, as I said, I'm a penny pincher, and um, I have a budget, and so I, I won't just throw herbs out. I will use them until they're gone. Um, I've never had a problem with this. I've never noticed that the energy doesn't work the way I want it to because the herb is older. Um, and it kind of goes along the same way, too, like with oils. I even have a blog post somewhere. I'm going to see if I can find the link to it to post in the description box beneath this video podcast. It's all about your oils and how the older and, um, the older and, and kind of the more foul they get, the stronger they are. I know I stated in this uh, blog post that I never entirely let an oil run completely out. I mix up more of this oil, um, kind of using it like the mother, like you would with vinegar or with sourdough. I never let a bottle um, of magical oil run all the way out. I'm constantly adding to it. So it seems like there would always be some of the some of the original um, oils or ingredients always with it at some point. Um, so that's another practice um, and another stance I have with oils as with herbs. They don't have to be pristine. Not all of them are going to smell good. I mean, um, I have a bottle of uncrossing oil that I bet is probably eight to ten years old. And it's just like it will raise the dead when you take the cover off. It's very strong. And um, I have a video out there in some of my playlists, and it might be in the Witch's Diary, where I actually just go through on my cabinets and look at some of the oils and some of the herbs that I have. And um, so you'll have to look through my playlists and find that if you are interested in watching that. So Julie, to answer your question, um, don't throw your herbs out. Um, get new bottles for them or rebag them if you have to, because if they've been packed away for so many years, you know. But go ahead and use your herbs, hon, and, and don't worry about throwing them all out and purchasing all new ones, and that is my opinion on this. The next question is from Tyson, and Tyson says, Hello, Amethyst. I recently stumbled across your site because I was researching the Wiccan lifestyle and their rituals as I have a keen interest in their practicings and beliefs that I would wish to practice. I have been reading over your site, and it is greatly detailed and easy to understand, which is great. But what I am wondering is, are males allowed to proceed in these rituals and beliefs? Because I notice how you always reference to the female sex when explaining some rituals. 
Okay, Tyson. First, just to answer your question right off the top, absolutely males um, practice this spirituality just as fully, just as completely as females. What most people probably, um, I've noticed, don't take into um, account is that when I am writing and when I am creating my websites or writing books or writing blog posts, I'm doing this all from my own perspective. My perspective is feminine because I am a woman. Um, and um, the belief patterns um, that I follow, I created my own spiritual magical path that I have dubbed Gray Magirium. And it is a combination of Dianic Wicca, Hoodoo, and Green Witchcraft. And it's a very personal spiritual path. So that's my path. So I would really advise you, Tyson, um, thank you, by the way, for all the great things you say about the site, my website, and I'm so glad that you enjoy it. But also, you need to find and explore um, blogs or websites with male witches on them or books written. Um, uh, oh, let me see. Oh, Raymond Buckland. He, he's got uh, lots of good books. Uh, we call it the Big Blue Book. It's kind of a classic. We've had it for years and years and years. It's, you know, it's not quite to my taste, um, but I'm sure it, it might be to your taste. I don't know. There's so many books out there. There's so many authors out there. So explore for your, um, for your own um, connection with other males um, in this pagan spirituality. And uh, go for it. And absolutely. And that's where we're going to go on to the next question. Amber asks, do you have any queen rituals? Um, I know that, um, no, to answer your question, no, I do not. Um, I more or less stick with the traditional stages and phases for the goddess and for woman as maiden mother crone. I know a lot of people um, like to stick an extra stage in there between the mother and the crone. It's a queen stage, kind of a tween stage. Um, I just don't feel the need to do that for myself um, because I, I view I view the three stages of the goddess and women um in kind of a complex light. It's not just like um, maidens are young girls who come on to menstruation, mothers are women who are having children, and crones are women who are now past uh, menopause. It's so much more than that. I don't know how anyone can just crank it down to that and believe that's all there is to it. For instance, the mother aspect of life, it's not just about physically giving birth to children. It's about being in the middle of the li of your life where some women are working on their um, uh, their occupations, their work. And so they're, it's, it's like the birth of a child. It's like anything else wonderful that you're creating. And it consumes them, and that's what they're working on, and they're building towards something, and they are creating something. Um, and so... So each stage is, is there's so much more. The, the maiden isn't necessarily just a young woman who suddenly reaches her menstruation and she goes from child to maiden. It's so much more. It's like, it's like your early 20s and 30s, even your 30s for some women, where they're exploring and where they're trying to find themselves and find out what they're all about and what they believe and how they feel and, and learn about themselves and learn about the world. The maiden is all about um, a learning experience. The mother is more about creativity. And then there is the crone. Uh, she's so misunderstood um, by so many so often. Um, she is not like the end phase for the goddess and replicating the end phase of a woman's life um, who is going to become old and withered and face her death. The crone stage is just another 
stage of life's explorations. We finally, when you come to the crone stage, you have reached a plateau. You've learned so much along the way, and you can kind of see the world from from a vantage point that perhaps um, younger individuals or even even young crones, those are women who have gone through all the maiden aspects of their life, all the mother aspects of their life, whether those are traditional, whether those are totally non-traditional, whether they're a literal or whether they're figurative. There can be young crones. They've gone through all that, and some of them will reach this plateau long before other women. And then there are those of us who have stumbled through life and suddenly wait, we wake up after a certain age. You know, some of us after we're 50, some of us after we're 60, some of us not until after we're 70. And we finally reach that plateau where we have this special vantage point and we can kind of kind of just look at it and take in everything we've experienced, everything we've learned, and we have a very clear view and idea of which path we want to take for the the next stage of our life and where we want to go and what direction. And that is how I view the maiden, the mother, and the crone. And that's where I'm going to end this question.